Yeah. Hello and welcome to this friendship bracelet tutorial. Um, I am Jessica, a library clerk here at the Macedon Public Library. Um, today I'm not only going to show you how to make some um, fun friendship bracelets of different, couple different kinds, but um, I'm also going to take you through a little walkthrough of how to use um, our creative bug service on our library website. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to share my screen here. And so if you go to, um, actually I should, sorry, I should explain. Um, I found this tutorial, uh, this friendship bracelet tutorial on one of the many, many classes on Creative Bug, um, a website um, craft tutorial service that we offer through the Macedon Public Library. Um, it has, I mean, just hundreds, if not, I don't even know how many videos offered by um, certified and recognized artists and um, craft crafters um, to teach you the basics or even the intermediate or advanced of pretty much anything you would wanna learn from sewing to watercolor to homemade um, uh, bath products. Um, and I just happened to come across this one for friendship bracelets. And it occurred to me that I, you know, remembered um, being a kid and how much I liked making friendship bracelets. And also since, you know, um, things are opening up, but we are still a little bit um, having to spend time um, finding ways to entertain ourselves <laughs> in ways that we we maybe wouldn't. I thought this was a, a nice little idea of, of something that's fun. It's creative. It also um, is something you can do at home. And um, you can make bracelets uh, not only for yourself, but for your friends as well. So um, if you go to uh, the Macedon Public Library website, and that is macedonpubliclibrary.org. So if you go to our website and you scroll down past the picture of our building here, you'll see all these links. And we've added quite a few, so it's, it's uh, maybe a little, bit, um, a little bit confusing. But if you go through, you can see that, um, you know, you can look for our upcoming events, you can browse our new books or DVDs. Um, we do still offer grab and go services here, but in the second column, you'll see something that says creative bug supported in part with federal coronavirus aid. So this was something we were able to do with a, uh, some grant money um, from the CARES Act, or not grant money, I'm sorry, um, some of the money from the CARES Act um, for to give people options for things that they could do virtually or at home. So if you click on that creative bug link, it will, see I'm already logged in, so it'll take me to my page, but if you are logging in for the first time, it will take you to a page that will ask you for your library card number. Um, and all you have to do is put in your library card number and um, it'll have you put in a little more information about your name. Um, but other than that, I haven't, I personally haven't received any emails or, so if you're worried about like, oh no, signing up for another thing and it's gonna fill up my inbox, I haven't seen anything, um, it, it hasn't been, you know, something I felt that was like intrusive or, or bothering me, or it's that kind of bait and switch where you're getting these free classes, but, you know, we're going to inundate you with, with uh, notifications, nothing like that. You just log in and you can search classes at your leisure. So um, as you can see, you can explore, you can search for classes. You can also search for images, instructors, or by blog. Um, if you hover over classes, you can see that they've got a few um, categories here, art and design, sewing, quilting, paper, knitting, crochet, um, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So all I did to find <clears throat> this particular class was I think I was just browsing around, but um, if I wanted to find it again, once I have a class, you can add them to your watch list, which is the um, classes you'd like to view in the future. Or you can see, I can see my recently watched videos. So it's quite handy that it does personalize it for you. Um, if I'm over here, you can see I can click by the, the, the J for 
for my first initial and I can go, you know, take a shortcut to recently watched my watch list, my gallery, um, you know, access to my account community. So the video that I watched for this tutorial um, was a video on make friendship bracelets and the, um, I'm sorry, I thought it would tell me the, the name of the, um, the name of the uh, crafter here who is running it. Um, I think I can get that here. There we go, Twinkie Chan is her name. Um, so down here along the bottom of the video, you can see that you can get the uh, description. You can get, if it's a long enough video, it will have chapters. <clears throat> and this is quite a nice feature that if it's a long video, you can come down here to chapters and you can go to directly to um, different parts of the video. And that's particularly helpful in this video because I'm gonna show you how to make a few basic um, knots for the friendship bracelets, but um, you can do more advanced ones if you would like to come back to this video. And um, that's why I'm showing you, we're not actually gonna watch the video together. I'm going to show you how to do the friendship bracelets, but if you wanted to do, get more advanced or you maybe wanted to do some different um, closures that um, I'm not able to show you today, you can sign on to create a bug yourself. It's completely free through our library website and come to this video and watch it yourself. Or if you wanna try some other craft, you can go to um, any other video that you or you can you can search up some other videos that you'd like. Um, the other thing I was just gonna say is down here at the bottom of the video here, I'm trying to align my screen a little better. There we go. Um, you know, down where I said chapters, it'll also show you materials. So for today, um, basically we're just gonna need some embroidery floss, some scissors. Um, I'm going to be using a clipboard to hold the friendship bracelet as I make it. If you don't have a clipboard, you can use a safety pin, which is really helpful. How I made this one was sitting on my couch watching TV and I pinned it to my jeans and was just working on it that way. Cause you do need something to hold it tight as you make the knot so that it will stay in place. Um, <clears throat> optional is for closures. You could use um, buttons, you could use beads. Um, uh, you can use some sort of decorative elements like that. Um, in your kit that you can get here at the Mastin Library, each kit is 50 cents just for the cost of the materials. You will get, let me close this real quick. So um, if you wanna come pick up a kit here from the library, you will get a kit that includes three skeins of embroidery floss. We chose to do them today in uh, black, white, and red for our local uh, Palmyra Macedon school colors. So we thought that would be a lot of fun. You will also get an assortment of some buttons, some, some red buttons there um, for closures. Um, and you will also get uh, a few safety pins as well so that you can, if you need to pin um, the work uh, to your, like to a uh, pillow or, or I, like I said, I pinned it to my jeans, <laughs> uh, then that will work um, or that will help. Also optional, I was not able to include this in the kits, but if you are going to use the button closures, um, Sometimes you can get the thread to, to go ahead and thread right through, but uh, it does it is helpful too if you have tapestry needles. I didn't have enough of these to include those in the, the kits, um, but um, a tapestry needle does come in handy for, for threading it through the button, you know, just so long as the, the eye of the buttons is large enough, you know, for the needle to, to slide through. So that would be helpful to have on your own. So um, I learned how to do this. Well, rather, I, of course, I did it when I was a, a teenager, but I'd kind of forgotten. So I relearned how to do this by watching the video on Creative Bug. And I'm going to show you today uh, what I 
learned so that you can take a kit home and do it yourself. So I had bought three skeins of the embroidery floss from the local store from Walmart. Um, each one of these skeins is, I think, 47 cents. It's less than 50 cents. So if you would like to do other colors, um, you can certainly purchase your own colors. Um, we also have some extra embroidery floss here at the library too in our um, imagine Imagination Center in the back corner of the library here. That's how I did this one is I just grabbed a bunch of different colors that we had and uh, decided to make a wider bracelet. But today I'm going to show you how to do the most basic um, single knot bracelet. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the end of your embroidery floss here. Right there. Now embroidery floss, you might know, it comes in strands of six individual strands. And if you were doing something like a cross stitch embroidery or things like that, normally you would separate those strands. You, you usually you use about two at a time. In this, um, we're just gonna go ahead and use the full strand of all six. We're not gonna separate the strands. But if you hold on to your, if these little, um, these little loops that keep the, the thread together, you just kind of hold that, you can just pull um, you know, your, your floss up and it shouldn't, um, should tangle. Um, and so I'm going to do about, I pull about, you know, an arm's length out. And of course I say this shouldn't tangle and then it totally does. <laughs> so I'm going to pull out, like I said, a little, a little more than an arm's length there. Then I will take this first strand and match it up with my next color just so I can get them the same length. So now I've got my black and I'll just um, match it up, cut them so that they're the same length. And then I'm going to take my white, find the end of it here. Is hiding on you. Sometimes it is, you gotta search for it a little bit. Try to find the end of your yarn. And if you just kind of, you know, move it around and look for it, there it is. It's hiding down in here. So just kind of tease that out. There we go. And again, I'm just going to pull. This one's only much smoother than the red bit. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pull that out. It gets stuck, just give it a little tug. All right, so I'm going to match this up with my other colors here. Okay. Now, depending on how thick you want your bracelet to be, you could do one strand of each color, or you could do two. Um, and just rotate them around. Um, also, another important thing to remember is what kind of closure you're gonna want on your uh, bracelet at the beginning, because um, there are a couple different closures, which uh, she, uh, the presenter does a really good job of going over in the video. Um, if you are going to tie on your bracelet and just keep it on, then it's fine to start with some loose strands um, and when you're done, you'll just braid those and tie a knot and braid the other end and tie a knot. And then you can just tie it onto your wrist and it can just stay there. Some people uh, with friendship bracelets, they like to tie them on and never take them off. Um, wear them in the shower, go everywhere with them until they eventually break and fall off um, sometime later. Um, if you would like yours to be something that you can take on and off, then there's a couple different closures, um, one of which, or a couple of which involve having a loop at the end. If you want a loop closure, then you're gonna want to measure out your strings a little longer so that you can double them up. And you're gonna want to match up the ends and keep a loop here at the top. So you're gonna tie a knot, 
you're going to make sure you keep that loop there at the end. And so kind of hold on to your loop and, and tighten your, your knot there. Now, how you begin is if you're using a safety pin, um, it's, it's not usually enough to put it through the loop because the loop's too loose. You want to kind of weave the end of the safety pin in through your knot here, and then you can pin it down to your, uh, like a pillow, or like I said, I usually do it to, to the leg of my jeans. Um, I am going to use a clipboard. So I'm gonna take my loop and clip it right in place. I'm gonna do it above the knot. That way when I start doing my, my knot work, I don't have um, a gap from where I started. So now I'm gonna try to get my camera down here. Oops, so you guys can see. Now the key to doing friendship bracelets is what is called a forward knot. So if I'm facing like this, how I'm gonna start doing my knots is I'm gonna take one strand, pull it over to the left-hand side here. So then I'm going to basically make like a number four. And it's not going to be this exaggerated all the time. You'll get this very quickly, how to do this, but it's kind of like you're gonna make a big number four. So your string is gonna go over top of all your other strings, the string you're tying with. You're gonna go underneath, loop it underneath and through. And you're just gonna make a knot. And you're just gonna keep doing that over and over. And the easiest type of friendship bracelet is to take all of your strings and hold them together and just knot over top of a sing using a single thread. So you just keep doing that. And what will happen is naturally you'll start to get this spiral that goes around your bracelet. Now, some people can count, you know, will count and do only a certain number of knots and then switch to another color. I just kind of eyeball it so that you will start getting a solid block of color. You know, in this case, we're starting with the red. And then once you've got a good, what you feel like is a good block of color, you can switch to another color. So I am going to switch to white next. So I'm gonna put the red that I was using in with the other strands, hold those all together, grab my white here and do the same thing. Pull out with that four shaped knot, loop through and pull up tight. So what you wanna do is you don't really have to go fiddling with your knots too much, but when you get to the top, just give it like a real whoops, loose, uh, or like a, a little medium sort of tight pull upward and that will really secure your knots and you just keep on going so like i said this is the easiest kind of friendship bracelet to make to start with it's a great way to start because it really gets you into the habit of you know having the right sort of tension on your knots um, working with your strings, knowing how to hold, um, you know, the work piece as you're going. It's also really um, easy to start getting sort of lost in what you're doing. Um, so you can do this while doing other things. You can do this while, you know, watching TV or um, listening to music. And that's how I always like to do it was, you know, while doing something else. And then once you feel like you've got your next section about as long as your first section, and sometimes you can give it a little gentle nudge upward, you can grab another color. And again, just that little four shaped knot. And just keep going. 
And I find this really kind of relaxing. It's just sort of like it gives your hand something to do while your mind is free to sort of wander, which is nice, especially since right now, I mean, the weather is beautiful today, but we, we are still in a New York spring and we will have those rainy sort of days if you're stuck inside and you just don't have a lot to do. And you're kind of watched everything on Netflix by now, as I'm sure all of us have, you know, <laughs> this gives you something to do while um, maybe already, you know, repeating those same kind of uh, pastimes you've, you've probably done a million times by now, <laughs> being stuck inside. So, as you can see, it's real easy. It comes together real quickly. Um, and what's helpful too is since we're doing six threads here, I can do one of the reds and it's gonna get, you know, a little shorter as we go as I'm tying the knot. So then the next time I come around to red, I can do the second strand, which will be longer. So. And as you can see, it comes together real fast. So. And so you would just keep going on in that vein, switching colors as you like. So, and you can see, hopefully you can see that it gets that nice spiral design going around. So I'm not gonna sit here and make you guys watch me make that whole thing because I already have a, another kind of bracelet that I started. So this one I'd originally had on a safety pin, but I'm gonna stick it to my clipboard here. Now for this design, it's very similar. This one you can see I didn't start with a loop. <clears throat> and this one is very similar, but you can see we're going flat. So what you do with that is again, I had six strands. And instead of starting with three strands and folding it in half for this one, I cut six strands, two of each color. And how you start is you tie a knot at the beginning. You take your, you wanna lay your strands out in sequence of how you want them. And then you start with the first color you wanna start with. You take this strand next to that one. And again, you're gonna do those four shaped, the four forward knot. I do, was doing two knots on one strand because it gives you more, like it shows better. So, and then I take that strand I've already tied two knots on, I set it aside, I move to the next one. One, two, move that strand aside, move to the next one. And you might think that it's hard to keep your strands, um, your strands uh, separate from each other, but actually once you get the first row done, they fall into order naturally because of how they're knotted. So. It's not hard at all to keep them, keep them separate and keep them in order. So one, two, last one, one, two. Now how I did this pattern, and you can do the patterns any way you want, is I wanted to make the color blocks a little bit thicker. So I did two rows of each color. One, two. So this one is called a stripe, as you might imagine. There is also a pattern you can do called a chevron, which is the one that kind of makes a little V. And you do that by doing forward knots and backward knots. And that was something I didn't quite master. So um, I will leave that to, um, if you're interested in that, you can, you can look at the video on Creative Bug. She goes into how to make chevron. She also goes into how to make hearts or even how to include um, letters if you would like. So I'm gonna show you how to finish it off now. So it's convenient that I have six strands because I'm gonna do a little braid here. So first I'm gonna take my finished bracelet here and I'm gonna tie a knot at the bottom. So sometimes you gotta kind of work, you know, you gotta kind of work your knot up. And if you end up with some loose strands, just 
in your mat, just kind of pull them individually. Give them a little tug, pull them nice and snug there. Get your knot up close to the bottom of your work. So I'm going to do a braid. I'm gonna separate my strands of my three colors. You can mix the colors up if you'd like, but I'm gonna do a braid. So, you know, just alternating over the top of the center strand there. This is where it might work a little bit better to have a safety pin as opposed to a um, clipboard because the clipboard likes to move, but we'll make do. So we're just gonna keep doing a nice neat little braid. And you want to make it fairly long because this is how you're going to tie your bracelet on. So you really want to make sure you give yourself extra length, um, not just for your knots, but I think for this one, what I did was um, since I wasn't, it would be a good idea if you were going to loop over too, but I think I did two arms length. So when I pulled them out of the skein, I kind of just measured out my arm and then started from the bottom, pulled out a second one. Um, so I had like two, um, you know, arms length worth of embroidery floss. We're getting close to the end here. So I'm gonna to get to the end of my braid. And again, I'm gonna tie a knot. I'm gonna kind of shimmy this knot so that it's close to the bottom of my braid. And again, if I have sort of loose colors sticking up, you can just kind of pull each strand to, to really make your, <clears throat> excuse me, make your knot nice and snug. Now, you're going to want to do the same thing to the other end is, but this one's already got a knot. So we're just going to separate out our colors and do a quick little braid here. Now, if you wanted to do a different kind of closure, this is how like you can tie it on and leave it on. But if you wanted to do a different kind of closure or you wanted your bra bracelet adjustable, or if you wanted to use a button or a um, bead for a loop closure, all of that is covered in the Creative Bug video. I feel like this video is all, already getting far longer than I anticipated. So <laughs> um, I will leave that for um, if you guys wanna watch that. Um, but this will be the easiest method of how to tie on your bracelet. It does help if you're, if you're gonna have your bracelet tied on, and you're just gonna keep it tied on permanently, it does help to have a second set of hands to help you tie it on. Um, <clears throat> so you can get it nice and snug. So as you can see, we're just doing a very simple braid. Going to again tie a knot on the end here and sort of shimmy it down to where it's snug up against the bottom of our braid. And then you can trim the ends however you would like. And you can see we've got our Palmac Pride bracelet there. Oh, Palmyra Masson in colors. 
Um, and if you, like I said, this would help to have a second set of hands. So if you can put your bracelet on and have somebody help you, or, you know, it is possible to do it um, by yourself, but I'm not gonna make you guys watch me struggle. But <laughs> if you have somebody that can help you like really secure that knot with a second knot, then you can have your bracelet, your friendship bracelet on. You can um, make them for your friends, obviously, and hand them out. Um, you can do different colors, you can do different styles, you can do um, all kinds of different patterns. It's just a lot of fun. It's something that really, you know, passes the time on those sort of boring, dreary days. And like I said, it's really easy if you're, if you're um, doing something else and you're just a little bored, you can also be doing this with your hands at the same time. Um, and it's really easy to do both. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Um, if you would like to pick up a kit to make your own friendship bracelets. We do have them here available at the Macedon Library um, for 50 cents um, just for the supply costs. It has everything you need, except if you um, you will have to get tapestry needles on your own if you wanted to um, do them where you can weave it through the button a little easier. But um, we are now open to the public, so you can come right in and ask for a kit. And hopefully this was enjoyable and you guys learned something new and it gave you something to do on those boring days inside <laughs> and um <clears throat> excuse me um so i hope that this was uh worth the while and i hope everyone's happy and healthy and safe and has a great day see you next time bye